Okay, guys, let's talk about the types of pain. And I'm sorry I have a little bit of a cold, um, so if you hear me coughing, hopefully it doesn't blow out your eardrums or anything like that. So, pain can be divided in several different ways. It can be divided based on its duration, and this does come in handy when it comes to treatment as we treat people differently if they have chronic acute or subacute pain. So, acute pain is pain that is less than 30 days. Subacute pain is pain that's between one month and, 30 to, and three months. And chronic pain is greater than three months. So you can see this distinction here. And we'll talk in the next slide about how this makes a difference pathophysiologically and, um, and how we treat it later on. When we talk about pathophysiology, pathophysiology really can be divided into two different things, neuropathic or nociceptive pain. Now, recently I looked at the RX prep book they do mention that neuropathic pain can sometimes be called pathophysiological pain. I just want you guys to be aware of that. So I'll just put a little AKA here. But for our purposes, we're going to divide this into neuropathic and nociceptive. It makes more sense to call that neuropathic pain because when we talk about it, it does involve damage to the nerves and usually causes a stinging or burning sensation. And then nociceptive pain is kind of the throbbing, burning, uh, or throbbing, stabbing pain that we usually think of. And it can be divided into two different groups. A visceral, meaning that it's an organ, or a somatic, meaning muscle, bones, or joints. Then we talk about severity. So mild pain is usually from a pain score, stands a 1 to 3, moderate pain, 4 to 6, and severe pain, 7 to 10. Now, as I mentioned before, we we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between acute, subacute, and chronic pain. Now, acute pain is pain lasting less than 30 days. Subacute pain is between one to three months, and chronic pain is greater than three months. We're going to really focus on the extremities or the external ones here with your acute pain and chronic pain first, and then we can talk about subacute pain because this is kind of a way station between acute pain and chronic pain. So, Acute pain. Functionally speaking, it's adaptive, meaning that, for example, if I broke my ankle, it's going to hurt. And the reason it hurts is because you don't want to re-injure that ankle. Correct? This is adaptive in nature. You're not trying not to prevent re-injury. Versus chronic pain really is non-adaptive in nature. The idea here being that it is... <coughs> causing you to have, um, it usually occurs whenever there's absolutely no, or it can occur whenever there's absolutely no underlying issue or underlying damage. So a lot of times with patients with chronic pain, you can actually look at a CT or an MRI and there might be normal. And it's usually occurring after the initial injury and insult has already resolved. Organic causes. So usually that is common in acute pain. We know why the patient's having pain and we can identify it, but it's not always present in chronic pain. Depression is much more common in chronic pain because often it is hard to find treatments for it and you do feel like a little bit of hopelessness knowing that your pain's never gonna go away or feeling that your pain's never gonna go away. Versus it's much more uncommon in acute pain. Your goal here and acute pain is to help cure the problem underlying it and thus cure the pain. Versus in chronic pain, we really can't cure the underlying problem usually, so we're trying to just maintain functionality. <coughs> when we talk about dependence and tolerance to meds, it's much more unusual for acute pain, especially because we're supposed to treat them for between three to five days. Versus in chronic pain, it's much more common. Um especially in patients that are taking opioids. And then when we talk about the pathophysiological characteristics, chronic pain and neuropathic pain, neuropathic pain does take a, some time to start developing in some cases. So usually chronic pain is more likely to be neuropathic or nociceptive versus acute pain is usually just nociceptive. Again, subacute pain is really in that way station between when patients have had their initial injury and their practice they're heading towards chronic pain so our goals here are really to prevent severe pain where the patient finds it intolerable or the progression to chronic pain 
your dependence may be developing to certain drugs, especially if you've been on them between the over 30 days. <coughs> Next, we have cancer pain. This is also known as malignant pain. Cancer pain can be caused by either the original or the tumor itself, whether it's growing so fastly that it's starting to affect other organs or it's causing obstruction. So for example, in my service, we do have patients that come in with colon cancers that are causing large bowel obstruction so that they can't pass any bowel movements and obviously that is a very painful situation. Or whenever somebody's tumor is growing fast or growing to the point where it's starting to impede on other organs and cause pain. It also can be associated with the treatments. So some chemotherapies like venacristine can cause um, neuropathic pain, cause nerve damage. Or, um, for example, radiation. A lot of patients will get radiation burns or causing issues with other organs around the area that's being radiated. And then also surgeries. It can be chronic because most patients' cancer treatments does t do take months at a time or acute. And you can also have patients that are chronically in pain and might have acute breakthroughs. Neuropathic pain, as we mentioned before, is really associated with damage to the nerves, whether it be in the central or peripheral pathways. It usually results in loss in pain and sensations, but also a paradoxical increase in pain. So the idea being here, though you have nerve damage, those nerves are still firing off pain signals, even though you might not have sensation in that extremity. So think about diabetic foot exams. A lot of patients with diabetes may have peripheral neuropathy. But whenever you do that foot exam, so they're pain, they have painful feelings in their feet, but when you do the foot exam, you're not seeing that they're actually feeling all those sensations. And this is usually a tingling, burning, electroshock-like pain. It can occur spontaneously without stimuli, and you usually have some sensory defects. You can also have what's called allodynia, where you experience pain from stimuli that's not normally painful, for example, there will be patients that will come in and say, my socks hurt or my shirt hurt. My shirt makes me hurt. Um, that's allodynia. And then hyperpathia is an exaggerated response to stimuli. <coughs> Where, for example, you're putting down your foot and you have even more pain than usual. Um, you can kind of think about that as, think about whenever your foot's asleep and you get up and start trying to walk around. Obviously, every time you put your foot down, that hurts even worse. So that's an example of hyperpathia. And I'm not saying that every time your foot's asleep, you have neuropathic pain. Please do not start prescribing yourself stuff for that. In the next section, we'll talk about how to work up this pain, and that'll be the first steps in trying to treat the patient.